May Arnold, he decided to rent out his apartment in order to earn some extra money. But Arnold, where are you gonna live now? It looks like in the woods. Well, I'm not even worried. You probably already know that you gotta stuff leaves under your shirt to keep warm, filter your drinking water, and no, don't eat anything, idiot! So, while you're not yet too far gone, listen carefully all around you. The noise of a tractor can be heard from three to four kilometers away, a dog barking two to three kilometers away, a train going by can be heard from ten kilometers away, and BTS songs, well, you can always hear them. Yee, what's that, Arnold? Ooh, just look. This little kid, he's lost, just like you. After all, slow lorises live mainly in tropical forests. Don't even try to pet him, Arnie! Lorises lick their elbow joints, which secrete a deadly venom so their bite can kill you. You should follow animal paths. It'll be great if you can find flowing water, a stream or river. Here you can get food by catching fish. Yeah, uh, Arnold, doing it that way, you'll be here all day. And as you can see, I was right. Night is the most dangerous time in a forest. Hey, uh, buddy, I think you ought to spend the night here in this tree. Yeah, it ain't the Ritz, but it sure is safe. In the morning, you need to get to a clearing so you're visible to rescuers. Finding a person in a forest is a very special operation involving rescuers, volunteers, and the military. The terrain is divided into squares, and each one is thoroughly combed. There was a case where somebody who was lost without knowing it ended up looking for himself. This guy managed to get out of the forest, didn't tell anyone, and joined in the search looking for him. You can be seen from the air if you make a fire. It's best to throw fresh foliage on it to make it really smoky. Oops. It's not the rescuers who found you, but a local hunter. He saw your fire. Hey, when did you manage to get to the seaside? So, what's the whole beach set for anyway? Ah, is this to get Bertha's attention? Wow, it actually worked! She invited you to visit her! But, hey buddy, do you have enough money for a ticket? I have an idea. You can fly to Bertha in extra super duper economy class. And instead of the usual tablet and pillow, you're gonna need food, water, and a porta potty. Don't worry, Arnold. You're not the first one to travel like this. Reginald Reg Spears, without any money, got all the way to another continent in just three days. Nowadays, warehouses are like cities with their own laws and regulations. The probability of losing a package is reduced to a minimum. Robots work on the conveyors by reading special barcodes. This reduces the risk of human error. In 2019, China set a world delivery record with 345 million packages delivered in just one day. The worst thing that can happen to a package is that it can get detained in a port at customs. I agree, for the person inside, this ain't like staying at the Ritz. Finding yourself in a confined space under the blazing hot sun is a difficult task to endure. Arnold, hang on, little buddy, it's just a little longer now. To be precise, 23 days, 17 hours, and 45 minutes. And a person is not the most amazing thing ever delivered in a package. An entire bank was transported this way. It was dismantled and sent to another city. Welcome to Australia, Arnold! One of the benefits of traveling by package is courier delivery right to the final destination point. Bertha will be here any minute. Wow, what a babe! Arnold, are you ready? Good look for you, Arnold. She definitely won't forget you like that. Whoa. Looks like someone had some fun last night. And something tells me your brain is probably just as much of a mm. mess as this room. You really don't remember anything at all. Arnold, could it really be? Last night, did you finally become a real man? Congratulations, Arnold. This is your first alcohol intoxication. And these are the first unpleasant consequences of a new acquaintance. Arnold, how about a toast to your new friend? Ah, well, I see, of course. If you gotta, you gotta. Oh, Arnold, did you really want to make a lifelong reminder of this event? At least you'll have something to tell your 
friends about later. As you can see, the consequences of alcohol intoxication don't just damage your health. They damage your bank account, too. Oh, you were unmatched in generosity last night, Arnold. You were the king of the party. Hmm. Now, where's your tooth? Anything ring a bell? Nothing? No? Arnold, you didn't know this, but drinking too much leads to unnecessary aggression. And you certainly paid a price for that. Ooh, you found a solution. Time to take aspirin. Oh, wait, no. You forgot to restock your first aid kit. But really, Arnold, all these troubles are just in your head. Mineral water is a miraculous thing. You're dehydrated. Just need to replenish the missing water from your body. What's with the jacuzzi? I totally understand if you want to quit drinking after last night, but not water. You didn't think it'd be that easy to escape your hangover, did you? Someone call Spielberg. We have a plot for a new Jaws. What is it, Arnold? Are you calling an ambulance? Ah, you decided to recharge your strength with delicious pizza. But you forgot about one thing. Booze breath. These are the decay products of ethanol that appear in the body after the liver has taken over its processing. One of them, acetic acid, has a particularly nasty smell. Hey Arnold, you sure you still want to sleep after eating? Sadly, you can forget about sleep. Cerebellar functions are impaired after alcohol intake. As soon as you close your eyes, the cerebellum ceases to have enough data for orientation in space and starts transmitting broken data to the cerebral cortex. Say hello to bed spins. Poor Arnold. It's a pity just to look at you. Let me give you one piece of advice. Right now, a cup of hot tea will save you. Wrap yourself in a warm blanket and fall asleep so soundly that no prince can possibly wake you up. Relax, you're in the middle of the ocean with no one to disturb you. There's not a soul within a radius of even hundreds of kilometers. Don't cry, I'll help you survive, you little jerk. Just listen carefully and remember everything I tell you. First of all, it's absolutely necessary to find clean drinking water. The easiest way is to lick the dew drops that collect on the raft. Not that, Arnie, that's bird shit. Alas, the number of such dew drops is way too small for you to survive long. A more difficult way is to find some kind of tank to collect rainwater. But you might die before it ever rains. So let's move on to the third method, and the most difficult one. Arnold is too stupid to pull this off, but you dear audience listen. From two containers, a bag, and a weight, you can build a water distiller. Put the salty ocean water in the large container and it will evaporate, gathering at the center of the bag and dripping into the smaller container. And voila! Your freshly distilled drinking water is ready. Arnie, time to go fishing. Eat everything you catch that doesn't look poisonous. Algae, plankton, jellyfish, and even small fish can be caught with just a simple t-shirt. Yeah, it might taste like shit, Arnie, but who the heck are you? you to complain. I don't advise you to look at the ocean for too long. The sun's rays are reflected from its surface and will burn your eyes. You will no longer see the world, but the world will still see you. It's better the other way around. Arnie, you should build a canopy over the raft to shield yourself from UV rays. Thermal shock in the open ocean is guaranteed death. But, however, a storm is coming long before the sun can even begin to threaten you. To keep the raft from rolling over, put all heavy objects in the center and pray to Poseidon for mercy. Congratulations, you survived the storm. But still, there remains the problem of finding land. You know, I forgot to tell you, Arnie. You're at the furthest point from land in the entire world ocean. Elon is unlikely to reach the finish line. After all, no one took into account that while the race was taking place, Snot and Gob would be arranging a barbecue for themselves. It seems that even the normal temperature of the sun isn't enough to grill their infamous pan-galactic gargle bangers. Ah, now that's much better. Oops. Solar flares like these are not good because they usually disable all the power plants and electrical appliances on the Earth. This will definitely negatively affect all vital processes on the planet, particularly in medicine, or such absolutely crucial needs like social networks, likes, and reposts.
Only Satanists won't be affected. It might even benefit them. And here's our ultra-fast turtle. Like everything electric, Elon's car broke down. The important thing here is not to celebrate ahead of time. He might be dumb, but Arnold for sure knows how to wink perfectly. Too bad he's intellectually challenged. The battery has died. Now, these guys need somehow get out of the desert. It's good that Elon has already come up with something. And it's even better that his trunk has a, a bucket, a mini rocket, and groceries. Ooh, potatoes are a great idea. After all, one potato can stably deliver 0.5 volts of voltage. It will take about 13 volts to start Arnold's combustion engine car. So, with 26 potatoes, a zinc nail, and copper wire, we should have enough to start the car. Darn it! The crank current is too low. To start the engine, you need hundreds of thousands of potato batteries. I'd advise you to hurry up. The sun is setting and the desert nights here get quite cold. Wow, guys, great outfit. I hope we can do without the famous blue crystal here today. Oh, wait, I know what you're trying to do. If we take zinc bowls, screws, coins, sponges, potassium oxide, copper, brake pads, and we mix them together and connect them to the car, then we'll have a regular battery charge. The guys did everything right. It's a shame that there still isn't enough power to drive. Hurry up, the clock is ticking. Arnold, stop digging around there. Wait, show me what you found. A magnet! This is exactly what we need, Arnold. Hey, Elon, this isn't the best time for that. Ah, it's for a common cause. In 1831, Faraday conducted a similar experiment for the first time. For this, we need a coil, copper wire, and a magnet. We insert the magnet in a coil wound with copper. We move the magnet inside, and in each coil of copper, a voltage of 0.01 volts is generated. But due to the large number of turns, everything is working just fine. Let's see how it works for the guys. Wow! Just be careful with your finger! Well, at least we survived. Man, the finger will grow back. Arnold, leave the Tesla here. And now the party continues. Uh-oh. One fine day, which didn't portend disaster at all, Arnold got locked up in a hypermarket until the end of his days. You may ask why, and the answer is just because. I simply wanted to lock him up in a hypermarket. Here, you can eat sweets and candy bars all day long, and you can drive around the store in a cart. At your disposal are goods for recreation, sports, clothes, and even medicines. On average, there are 120,000 different products in a hypermarket that will provide you with 50 years of a carefree life. But unfortunately, without electricity, a large part of these goods are going to spoil the very next day. At room temperature, the entire ton of milk that's in the store will be gone in just 18 hours. Fresh chicken, pork, and beef will all go bad within a day. Cakes and pastries will last a little longer, maybe 36 hours, if you're lucky. You could try to prepare. You could salt the fish and dry the bread. Then their shelf lives will be extended by years. But hey, seize the day, right Arnold? After a week, vegetables and fruits will also go bad and you'll have to switch to cereals. But even just their preparation will deplete the limited supply of water you can drink by at least 10 years. You could try to extend that by filtering it through coal from the gardening department and then cleaning it with silver. Okay, so from now on, your usual meal is going to be canned food. Beef stew can last almost indefinitely if the packaging isn't damaged. And pickled cucumbers and tomatoes can be an additional source of water. So, the three tons of canned food that are in the store will last you for eight years. And then the last remaining source of food will be... Many things can be used for other purposes. For example, you can wipe your bum with just about any kind of paper. You just need to crumple it up thoroughly and, well, use it. Just like our great-great-grannies did. And when you run out of cash, 
You can always use the card. <gasps> Come on. No way. Are you finally going to meet her? <laughs> what a maroon. You're seriously depressed, buddy. The World Health Organization estimates that depression affects 300 million people worldwide. That's about 4% of the global population. Depression occurs due to a deficit of neurotransmitters in the brain, serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. Without these natural chemicals, favorite activities stop being pleasurable and colors turn gray. And all of this can end very tragically. So just don't do something stupid, Arnie. Arnold, you have millions of fans on YouTube. Why do you need all this? Come to me, buddy. I'll give you a big hug. Depression isn't just a change in mood. It's a real illness. To treat it, you most definitely need to consult a doctor, preferably a psychiatrist. Antidepressants can help you, but be careful. Some are addictive. Start going to the gym. Believe it or not, exercise is one of the best ways to reduce symptoms of depression. And change your diet. Eat more dark chocolate, seafood, nuts, and fruits. Meet with your friends. You can get a pet and take it for walks in the park. Now that everything's stabilized in your nervous system and your hormones of happiness have returned to normal levels, the world sparkles with new colors. And now that you're in better physical shape, girls have even started checking you out, buddy. Is that Susie? She's ready to meet you. Quick, answer her. And tell her you're just standing here like an ignoramus. Oh, no. Not again. <laughs> Those are some beautiful, large vegetables. Hey, stop eating in the store. Those vegetables are GMO, genetically modified organisms. This tomato contains a silkworm gene. And your normal everyday cucumber has a 40% similarity to a human from a genetic standpoint. But don't be afraid. GMO isn't scary. And I know just how to prove it to you. Let's genetically modify you, Arnold! It's illegal to do such experiments on human beings. But in 2018, two genetically modified babies were born in China. They were programmed to have immunity to HIV. Now, we're in the Pentagon's tippity-top secret laboratory. They mainly produce GMO soldiers. CRISPR-Cas9 is a new technology that allows the DNA of one organism to be implanted into the DNA of another. A regular fish was implanted with genes from a bioluminescent jellyfish. Now it's a glowfish. Vegetables are modified for longer storage and better taste. But what about you, Arnold? Do you want to be taller? We can use the Michael Jordan gene. and. We'll remove the sweating gene from you, so you stop stinking so much. And meet Arnold 2.0. A new life has begun. Without sweat, people will finally sit next to you on the bus. And your neighbor's grandma will stop calling you a short little redheaded virgin. Now she'll just call you a redheaded virgin. Yes, genetic engineering isn't perfect yet, but it is the future. Designer GMO babies are coming soon. And it'll be possible to remove the cruelty gene from criminals. It's a new stage of evolution. Sweet dreams, Arnold 2.0. I built a machine that makes things invisible for 24 hours. There are three possible approaches to invisibility. The first is perfect transparency, which sadly we cannot achieve. The second is camouflage, when the light rays emanating from the object correspond to the rays that we would expect to see in the absence of the object. This is exactly what my machine does. And the third and last approach is when an object is swathed in a metamaterial, something like an invisible hat. 
that transforms the path of light rays so that they seem unchanged. Now, we'll try it on a pizza. If everything works out, it will be a pizza that you won't have to share with your friends. Okay, I'm throwing the first switch. Did you know that the first three-dimensional invisibility was achieved by a group from the University of California, Berkeley in 2008? They created a mesh of silver microfibers that doesn't reflect or absorb light rays. As a result, the eye sees light only from the objects behind the camouflaged entity. Now the second switch. Don't move, Arnold. Wait, what are you? Oh, you are such an imbecile. I'd smack you upside your head, but damn it, I don't know where you are. Put this hat on so I can see you. Okay, you have 24 hours. What are you going to do? Who'd have any doubt that's where you'd go first? If my machine worked according to the principle of invisibility, you'd become blind because the invisible body's refractive index becomes equal to that of air, and the lenses in your eyes would lose the ability to reflect light rays and focus them on the retina. The retina itself also wouldn't be able to absorb visible light with its rods and cones due to its invisibility. But as I can see, your eyesight seems to be okay, you slobbering ignoramus. Okay, now that the gym is closing, can we do something else? You have 18 hours left. I meant something a little more significant, you block-headed jerk monkey. After all, you could reveal terrible uh. secrets and perform incredible feats. You could even make your way into Area 51. Oh, right, it's in a different state. Do you have any ideas? Are you thinking about stealing it? That's a terrible idea. In any case, you need a plan. Of course, thanks to invisibility, you'll be able to stay long after closing. But then you'll need to bypass the guards. And there are also lasers all around the diamond. Can you really do a triple somersault, steal the diamond, and leave the museum in the car that will bring new antiquities for the exposition exactly at 2 a.m.? Even so, this is a really bad idea. The museum closes in an hour. Go hide in the corner and wait. And take off your hat, you mutton-headed twit. Get ready, Arnold. The main thing, obviously, is not to get caught. Arnold, it's go time! Aw, oh, nuts! All you had to do was a triple somersault, and you screwed it up again. <sighs> well, now, now you have to run for your life, Arnold! The exit is just around the corner. Come on, Arnold, you can do it! Damn, looks like you stole a glass copy of the diamond. Well, I gotta say this is an unfortunate turn of events. Although, to be honest, it's pretty logical that the original would be kept in a safe. Now you'll never have the love of the beautiful tug eye. Unfortunately, you're gonna become visible in just about an hour or so. So, good luck escaping. Don't worry, Arnold. They'll let you go if you answer correctly. So, guess what's in the picture? Wrong! And on this one. No! Get it together, man! Such experiments were carried out in the 1950s in the USA. Their goal was to develop paranormal abilities in soldiers in order to gain an advantage in the Cold War. The test subjects were given LSD, since LSD significantly increases the activity of neural connections. Arnold, you pull yourself together already. Even a rat learns faster than that. Well, true, this ain't no ordinary rat. He has a chip in his brain. Scientists proved the possibility of transmitting nerve impulses from a distance back in 2013. The rats were in different cities, but they acted together, thanks to electrodes implanted in their brains and the internet. It looks like Elon Musk is going to try all the different ways to develop telepathy on you at the same time. Arnold, stop! You haven't mastered your new skills yet, buddy. Mind reading has many benefits. Now, people can't hide anything from you. 
But I have to warn you, you won't like everything they think about. The pros in a relationship, you can immediately know if your partner really loves you or not. You can understand the language of animals and you can find your perfect match. But what if all people could read each other's minds? An ideal world without lies or falsehood. Or maybe not. Hey, mister, don't be offended if he thought your nose is too pimply. Gosh darn it, this is a disaster. No, Arnie, stop. Don't even think about it. Now, just imagine if you had two heads, you'd be way more popular. Your life would be much more interesting. You'd be smarter, and you could finally learn how to ride a bike normally. Look, this is the same guy from the sign, the circus ringmaster. Oh my god, did that lion actually just swallow the whole two-headed dude? No, actually it seems the heads are unharmed. But what's gonna happen now? Is the big show of the season cancelled? Hey, it seems the manager has noticed you and wants you to be in the cast. But only if you agree to have these two good as new heads sewn onto your body. Isn't that what you've always dreamed of? Well, since you agree, I think you should find out more about the upcoming surgery. The first successful head transplantation was done by Charles Guthrie in 1908. He did it on dogs, though. One of the heads was sewn to the neck of a dog's body upside down. In the 1950s, Demikhov achieved full functioning of a second head. He transplanted 20 heads together with the front half of the dogs. Then the head of one dog was transplanted onto the body of another. And then there was a monkey, which after transplantation even tried to bite one of the doctors. In 2013, Sergio Canavero announced plans for a human head transplant. The estimated cost was $12.8 million. In 2017, under his leadership, a dead human head was transplanted onto a corpse. Actually, it suits you, Arnold. Now it's time to rehearse your part. I hope you don't screw up and disgrace mm. these beautiful heads. <gasps> You're gonna have to juggle as you ride your unicycle on a springboard through burning hoops. Yay! They don't seem to like you being so stupid, Arnie. Try not to interfere with the professionals managing your body. All that's required of you is to not spoil the performance. The grand premiere. All eyes are fixed on you, Arnold. Today, you are the main part of the show. Fingers crossed, buddy. You're doing great. Just a little more and... Is that Tagaya over there? Did she come to see you? No, no, don't get distracted. Not now, Arnold. What a doofwad. By trying to be a gentleman, you disgraced yourself and the Truel brothers. That was the greatest failure this circus has ever seen. Enjoying the benefits of civilization, are you, Arnie? But remember, buddy, for this, you need to pay your electric bill on time. And I already warned you a million times, advertising is made just to suck every penny out of you. So go ahead. You just sit in the dark now. You deserve it. Oh, man, it hurts just looking at you. Okay, I have an idea. See, we're surrounded by trillions of bacteria that generate useless energy from the organic matter they feed on. So what I'm thinking is, let's build a bacterial power plant that uses your poop for fuel. Hmm, not enough for all your gadgets, is it? But what did you expect? Bacteria are really, really tiny. I know, let's embigify them. A bacterium the size of a cat will give us 46,000 times more energy. And we can get even more bacteria and more fuel. America produces 128 billion liters of sewage a day. This could provide electricity to an entire city and will also solve the problem of water purification. Ginormous halobacteria that feed on salt can provide free energy from the ocean and desalinate water for desert regions. 
three and a half million tons of plastic are thrown away every day. The embigified Idianella sakaiensis can recycle this plastic into energy. Then you can open up an electric vehicle charging network. Unlike fuel energy, which annually emits 37 and a half billion tons of CO2 into the atmosphere, bacterial energy is absolutely pure and emits only oxygen. Sounds like a great startup idea. Arnold, you've solved humanity's environmental problems and made trillions of dollars in the energy business to boot. Arnold! 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 Wake up! What? Are you dreaming about cat-sized bacteria again? You should know that cell division is only possible in microscopic organisms. Once a bacterium reaches its maximum size, it simply divides into two. This happens every 20 minutes. So in just six hours, one bacterium can multiply into 25,000. And your debts are multiplying at the same rate. Time to pay up, Arnold. Hurry, hurry, or in 20 seconds, you're going to be bacteria food.